Today, I would like to talk about the to stem ratio, which is so important in our pastures. It is important for the health of our soil, for the productivity of your pasture, and for the well-doing and animal performance in your animals. As we know, the leaf to stem ratio determines the levels of available energy for growth in the plant and how much energy is left after growth to feed the soil microorganisms by the root exudates. These soil microorganisms, in return, will uh, make available the nutrients in the soil that were previously unavailable to the plants. It is a virtuous cycle that depends on the leaf to stem ratio. This is due to the leaves producing energy through photosynthesis and the stems and brown leaves consuming energy by respiring. We also know that the digestibility of the leaves is at 60 to 70 percent while the digestibility of the stems and the brown leaves is only 30 to 40 percent. This means your cattle will have better nutrition when they consume more leaf. That's a no-brainer, right? Okay. Now, how can you quantify how much leaf as expressed as a percentage by weight your pastures contain in relation to stems and brown leaves? We need to remember that stems weigh much more than leaves. Number one, cut one square yard flush to the ground with scissors, with a knife, however, and put all the forage mass, uh, leaves, stems, and green leaves, everything, into a plastic bag. Next, weight it on a scale. That's number two. Step number three, separate the green leaves by hand with your fingers, as a cow will do, from the brown leaves and stems. Number four, weight the green leaves by themselves and divide it by the initial total mass of forage weight. Do the same with the brown leaves and the stems. Weigh them by apart by themselves in another bag and divide it by the total initial weight. Doing this, you will obtain the percentage of the total weight represented by green leaves and by brown leaves and stems. And this will be your leaf to stem ratio. This way, you can know for certain what percentage of your grass is green leaves and what percentage are stems and brown leaves which do not do photosynthesis. It is important you do this exercise at least once and it will come as a big surprise. Once you do this, you will get experience to judge the leaf to stem ratio in your fields. Remember, cool season grasses normally have a better leaf to stem ratio than warm season perennial grasses. I have measured this on common Bermuda, where selective grazing had been done for a long time. <coughs> As we know, selective grazing results in less leaf production less energy in the plant and a higher proportion of stems and brown leaves to green leaves. <coughs> this is so because the stems inhibit the formation of new leaves and what I found in this Bermuda grass that had been abused by selective grazing is that 97% of it was stems and brown leaves and only 3% was green leaves. So that explains why this productivity, this, the productivity in this pasture was so low. Now don't be surprised, I have found this everywhere, even on Toboso grass, in everywhere I have found it, when selective grazing is done all the time. So we see the leaf to stem ratio depends on grazing management. Selective grazing will lead to less leaf and more stems and brown leaves because that's what the cows reject. The process of total grazing, which includes non-selective grazing, will give you a higher leaf to stem ratio and a higher leaf production per square yard per year. 
in a plant with much more energy in, in itself, in its reserves, and to improve your soil. This is why I say, as the cow needs the grass, the grass needs the cow. But the cow needs to be adapted to genetics and the management of the grazing needs to be done correctly like in the process of total grazing.